So if you have followed me on any type of social media ever, you know I love handstands. So how do you do a handstand? Watch and find out. So even when you're standing right side up, you're technically balancing. It may not feel like it, especially as you get older, you kind of do it all the time, so it doesn't really feel like you're working at it. Handstands, the more you do them, the more effortless they look and the more effortless they feel because they actually are in reality becoming more effortless because your body is learning to take it from mentally having to think about every little movement to basically putting it on autopilot. Some people can't even remember to breathe when they're doing handstands. I see it all the time. I used to do it too. We hold our breath. Holding your breath creates more rigidity in your body. It creates a fluid ball chamber that actually makes you tighter. That fluid ball chamber is great if you're doing like bench press where you, some people hold their breath for a moment when they're stuck and then they exhale and get it up. There's more pressure for them to push off of, which lets them move more weight. In a handstand though, you're trying to stay there usually for longer than just a second or two or doing a rep. It's not just up and then down. So if you hold your breath, that's gonna make you potentially pass out. That's not a good thing to do ever, especially when you're upside down. Just as I'm talking right now, I should be able to keep talking in a handstand. If you notice, my voice stays pretty much exactly the same because I'm breathing. So if I'm holding my breath, I wouldn't be able to sound like this. So make sure that you are taking in your breath, regardless of whether you're upside down or right side up. The three things you wanna consider in a handstand, your entrance, and then I was talking about balance. So if you have two out of three of the points, it's entrance, balance, and stacking. Stacking is getting that four-story house on top of each other. If you have two out of three, you can usually save the handstand at least in the short term. Ideally, you want all three. Balance can really supersede the other two because you can be unstacked and have a bad entrance and have really, really good balance and still save it. But if you have a good entrance, but your stack isn't good, but you have good balance, you could still save it. For instance, so let's say this is a good entrance, but my stack is bad but I have good balance, I'm still able to hold it. All right, let's say my entrance is bad, but I have a good stack. So bad entrance, but I have enough balance to bring it to that stack, it saved the hands. So again, having two out of three is something to aim for. But that's great, you're like, great, Brendan, you're doing all the stuff because you can already do it. I'm scared to fall on my head, you know, maybe I don't have a friend to help spot me. Totally valid, I don't recommend actually doing this on your own in the beginning, have a spotter. So we're gonna use the wall. The wall is gonna be your friend in the beginning, but eventually you're gonna to need to grow up and leave this friend. Because if you're friends with this the whole time in your hand balance journey, you're never gonna leave it and you don't wanna do that. This is great to build the strength and to give you safety and security in the beginning. If you rely on the wall too much later on in your practice, it's hard to break the habit of using the wall and you're always gonna be scared to not have the wall. Two ways to use the wall. I'll show you the way that most people start with but after you get to a certain level of comfortability, I recommend switching to the other way almost immediately to break bad habits. So people kick up to the wall, right? You may have seen this. They're like this, their hands are up. They're like, oh yeah, the wall's gonna catch me. They're like, bam, I'm in a handstand, I'm so cool. Look, I can even do a one arm. Couple problems with this approach. My entry wasn't good. Even if it looked good, I'm not close enough to the wall. If I'm all the way up here, that means my body's gonna have to arch to make contact with the wall with my feet. Unless I'm in a split handstand where one foot is on the wall and the other foot is off, it's better to be close to the wall. You know, keep that social distancing. But you want to get close to the wall. Tuck your head in so you don't smack it into the wall because that's not comfortable. I've done it. Shoulder width apart. I kick up. My head is tucked in. And as you can see, my butt is on the wall and my heels are on the wall. And I'm looking down. I'm not looking behind me. But even this is not my favorite way to hold a handstand. It's good to start building strength and getting used to being upside down. Pretty safe to come in and out of. Um, again, just make sure you're close. Again, you'll have to play with that distance to see how close is close enough. Shoulder width is the distance with your hands, but in regards to how many inches away you need your fingers to be will vary. Now again, I was talking about that split handstand, so if you are far away on purpose, that's fine if you're trying to hit a split because then you can still stack and you're working a specific type of position of a handstand. And then you can even try to play from here, bringing that other leg to the top. And then maybe you switch and then bring the other leg to the top and down. All fair ways to work on the handstand. Again, I don't believe there's one way to do this. It depends on where you are right now and it depends what you want out of this. But some people just want to be able to hold a handstand for like 10 seconds or 30 seconds. Or some people want a really, really straight handstand. So know what you're actually striving for before you start training for it. Because if you 
the more descriptive you can get with your goal, the more likely you are to actually hit it than just, I want a handstand, but you don't know what kind. Kind of like when people are like, I want to get in shape. Well, what does it actually mean? Like, are you looking to lose fat? Are you looking to build muscle? Do you want to actually gain a skill for like a specific sport or activity? Or do you just want to look like, you know, a celebrity? Like, a specific celebrity from a specific movie that they want a specific diet for, that they went on a specific diet for to get in that shape. So again, know what you're aiming for. You can't score without goals. True. The other way I like the wall, which is much better for positioning, but scarier and more dangerous, is chest to the wall. So we did back to the wall. We're literally gonna walk up the wall backwards. This takes a lot more arm strength, for sure. Have someone spot you for this. It is safer. Uh, or have a pillow here, or be ready to tuck and roll out of it, or make sure you have the mobility to fall into like wheel pose or a bridge if that happens. But let's say it's not gonna happen, you're just gonna do it right because you're awesome. Again, I don't take, trust yourself, know your abilities, be safe. So from here, again, I'm not stacked, right? I gotta walk all the way to the wall. Even here, I'm still not stacked, but my chest is on the wall, but my hands are breaking that rule of the house where they have to be the first story. First story goes under my shoulders, right? Bring them closer. It's scary, it's harder, but your line will be much straighter. Again, I'm still looking down. I'm not looking backwards. Chest to the wall. Common mistakes, people do stomach to the wall. Again, now my line is not straight. My shoulders are breaking the rule. They are not over my hands. Push up, block your shoulders to come down, then either walk back down, or you can cartwheel down like a boss. But be safe. Or you'll flip and fall. But if you tuck your head, you'll be okay. Just roll. Um, it's not comfortable always, but it works. I should. So if I'm here and I'm like, oh no, my arms are tired. I'm not gonna make it. Tuck, roll, you survived. Good job. With handstands or even with lifting weights when we used to go to gyms is have one in the chamber. Always have enough energy to at least do one more repetition than you're stopping at if you're doing something heavy in a dangerous position because you don't want to get stuck with the bar on you. If you have a spotter, of course, then you can kind of go to failure because they can help you. If I'm doing handstands against a wall, I have one in the chamber in the sense I have enough energy to safely exit the handstand. I don't truly want to go to muscle failure in this position against the wall because it's harder to exit than a freestanding handstand where you can turn out in any direction. If I fall straight down to my head because I don't even have enough energy to push into a roll, that's gonna hurt a lot. All right, so that's how you can utilize the wall. But let's say you're at a point in your handstand journey where you wanna try it out here without a spotter, but how do you fall safely? Again, if you flip over, you can roll, or you can land in a wheel or bridge pose, or you can do what's known as a half turnout or a half pirouette. What this looks like, I'll show you from the side. I'm in a handstand. Cool, I'm tired, but I still have one in the chamber to come down safely. I'm gonna half pirouette towards camera, so I'm gonna take my right foot and bring it to the floor while bending my right arm to lower the height at which I fall from. I'm gonna pick up my right hand and put it towards my left hand. So it's gonna look like this. Bend. Again. Yeah. From the other side. You notice I pick up physically one of my hands and turn it. You can even pick up both hands because if you're pivoting on just one hand and if you twist and fall all the way over here, that's a lot of pressure on this wrist if you don't also move it with you. So again, that depends on how far you're falling. Um, the other thing to consider is what I mean by you don't want to have this arm locked out because if I'm falling from up here, and let's say I don't pick up my hand, this is really high to fall from versus bending the arm so the drop is not as steep. So you can kind of control your descent on purpose. It's like you're lowering the negative part of a handstand push-up as you bring yourself safely to the floor. So again, the biggest thing is to be safe and to make sure you are ready to go on to the next step before you do so. And to be ready doesn't mean you have to have mastered everything before 100% because I think of a handstand more as a tree with a common base or root and you know multiple branches. Each branch is a different skill. Maybe it's a one-arm handstand or a straddle handstand, or a split handstand. But the base, being able to control your balance, staying stacked, entering your handstand safely, or whatever it is that you need to do the next skill, just make sure you have it before you move on to the next one. So obviously, a two-handed handstand before a one-arm. 
How long do you need a two-handed before one arm? Some people say hold it for a minute solid. It's not a hard, fast rule, but it's not a bad rule. Because if you have strength and control to hold for a minute, that's usually a safe bet to start moving on. But mobility is going to play a huge part in your ability to do a handstand as well. So if you can't keep your body tight and get your arm to 90 degrees or 180 degrees, if you can't get your arm to 180 degrees, see, I'm even tight still on my lats because I learned these wrong when I was younger, so I'm still working on my mobility, but I have good enough balance to make up for it. But ideally, this arm should be all the way up straight without having to arch. That's why a lot of people arch in handstands. It's to make up for the lack of mobility. See how my arm goes further back when I arch, but then if I follow, it comes forward a bit. That's what we want to stay back there, ideally. So the way you want to think about position for the rest of your body, you want to pretend you're between two panes of glass. Or some people say like you're on a toaster or you don't want to burn your feet or either side of you. Whatever analogy works. Basically, hips are forward, pelvis is posteriorly tilted, so I'm not like this in the handstand. I'm tilted forward. Feet are together, my stomach is in, so I'm engaging my rib cage. So if you look, stomach is not like this, my butt is not behind me. I tuck this in and then I pull my stomach in, so I'm flat. From here, my arm ideally will be 180 degrees while looking up. Again, I'm still tight with my shoulders, so they don't go exactly where I want them to go. That's why my handstand isn't quite as straight as I want it to be, but I have enough balance. It's literally just working mobility. It just takes time. I'm not going to stop hand balancing because I love it, but I need to spend even more time on mobility than I'm already spending to hit there. But life gets in the way, so that's why just have fun with this. Meet yourself where you're at to get to where you want to go. So when you have that mobility, then build the strength on top of it. If you build the strength in the wrong position, so let's say your shoulders only get to like here, and you always strengthen here, it's gonna be really hard to then train to go further. Or you're gonna have to stretch twice as much to make up for the strengthening in the wrong position. Well, again, wrong is relative, but not ideal for getting that perfectly straight handstand. So just things to consider, mobility, then strength. Make sure you work on your balance. Be patient with yourself. Make sure you breathe. If you have other questions, I know handstands, this is a lot of information. More than one video truly can contain. And I'll break down stuff in more uh, detail if you guys want. So like, comment, subscribe below what you want out of the handstands, whether kind of balances, headstands, forearm balances, you name it. Until next time, guys, one-arm handstands.